Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics. Welcome back to the How to Breed Fish for Profit series. In the first video, we talked about things to think about in terms of why you want to breed the fish and the best ways to move fish to make the most money. In this video, we are going to start getting into the details. We're going to look at specific types of fish to breed based on the tank size. In today's video, we're going to be looking at the 10 gallon tank. In future videos, we will move up in tank size. So let's go ahead, let's take a look at the 10 gallon tank. Here are some good options. Now, for the options we're gonna talk about, we have species profiles on many of these fish. I will put them in the upper right hand corner as well as in the description below. If you want more information on caring and breeding for these fish, check out the description below. Okay, first thing, 10 gallon tank, you may have a good success rate breeding Neocaridina shrimp. Now we did a species profile on these wonderful organisms. My advice to you, if you are going to breed shrimp in a 10 gallon tank, you do want to be a little bit experienced in keeping water parameters stable. The other thing to consider is the type of shrimp that you breed is going to determine the amount of money that you bring in. The more common shrimp, like the red cherry shrimp, they're great but they may not bring in nearly as much money as let's say maybe you've got blue dream shrimp or you've got some pumpkin shrimp that have a really nice deep orange or maybe the black rose shrimp. So you wanna be thinking about the types of shrimp that are going to be in demand. So once you've settled on that particular type of shrimp, you get your 10 gallon set up. Again, more information on how to do that in the video in the description below. The big thing, the number one thing you're gonna to wanna to watch out for when you're breeding shrimp is one, it's gonna take a little bit of time for the shrimp to establish their populations. And two, there's going to be a significant amount of culling that you're gonna to have to do if you're breeding shrimp. You're gonna to wanna to remove the shrimp that don't exhibit the coloration that you want. You're gonna to have to do a little bit of homework to make sure that you understand the coloration differences between males and females so that you don't wind up just keeping all the wonderfully colored females and then some of those less colored males, you wind up getting rid of them all and now you've got a population that won't breed for you anymore. So while it takes a little bit of homework, this is a really great potential option for breeding in a 10 gallon. The nice thing about this and what we're going to do as we go through this series is see if we can double up in some way. So if you're breeding shrimp, another really good thing to consider are plants. So in that same 10 gallon, you could potentially grow out some plants, maybe some Anubias, maybe some Crips, Right, so we have a series, or we have a video, a beginner's video on how to grow plants. I'll put that in the upper right hand corner. That will be in the description as well. But it is very possible to have shrimp and plants in the same tank and in fact recommended. And so you could potentially not only be breeding and making money off your shrimp, but you could also be making money off of the plants. Option number two, guppies. Again, just like the shrimp, you want to be really careful about the guppies that you're going to be breeding. If they're just a mixed guppy, you might not make a lot of money from that. But if you can find some nicer strains, some healthy strains that show a lot of nice color, or maybe have really great finish, something a little bit unusual, something in demand, guppies can be a really good option for a 10 gallon. So maybe you have a male and two or three or four females. They start producing the fry. Now you're gonna want a little top cover for them, but this again is another tank where you could, you could breed the guppies and also grow plants and you get both of those revenue streams. You might run into a situation where you get a lot of guppies in a 10 gallon in a short period of time. And so your goal is going to be to choose strains of guppies that begin to show nice color as early as possible so that you can sell those guppies at a little bit of a smaller size and keep that tank moving so you don't want to get the overcrowding if you have to wait for those guppies to grow up to nearly full size before you can move them. Another option, and we bred a lot of these fish in the past, are peacock gudgeons. Now this takes a little bit more finesse than the guppies or the shrimp. And the reason for that is peacock gudgeons, they lay their eggs, you have to remove the eggs, usually within seven to nine days after they lay the eggs in a cave, otherwise the parents are going to eat them, which means you're probably gonna need an egg tumbler in order to get the fry to develop and possibly a second tank to either move the fry or the parents for grow out. However, the rewards can be quite great. Peacock gudgeons stay small, they generally command a decent amount of money, and they're easy to grow. And so peacock gudgeons are something I would definitely look at in a 10 gallon or greater. The other thing that you could potentially look at are quarry cats. Maybe you've got a male and a few females. 
And if you just have the quarry cats in there and you're keeping an eye on them, you're feeding them the blood worms to get them nice and big, and the females start laying those eggs on the glass, sometimes they wind up in a substrate. Uh, so in, in some ways, it's probably better to keep those quarry cats on sand in case the eggs wind up on the substrate. Now, once again, you're probably going to want to remove those eggs, put them in an egg tumbler, and grow them up in a second tank. But quarry cats can be a really good option for a 10 gallon. Again, we don't want to overstock a tank and have 10 quarry cats in a 10 gallon that are full grown. You might have a little bit of an issue maintaining water parameters. But this, yet again, is another potential combination, just like everything we've talked about so far, where you could potentially have not only the fish, but also the plants. What I found most interesting about quarry cats is these tend to do really well at a lot of the swaps and auctions we go to. It's actually surprising, but once again, you want to pick a strain of quarry that really brings a lot of interest. So for us in our market, the green quarry cats don't do well. Albino quarry cats really don't do well for us in our market. But if you get some of the other types of quarry cats that are a little bit more unusual, a little bit more appealing to most people, you can make a decent amount of money. Other options you have, but this is going to take a little bit more work. You can look at something like Celestial Pearl Daniels or maybe some smaller Tetras like Neons. For In this particular case, you might need a spawning mop. And so you'd want to research, how do I put a spawning mop in a tank? How do I remove the fry or how do I remove the eggs? Again, you're going to want a grow out tank for this, but it is possible to breed these smaller Tetras in smaller Rasboras, provided that you have the water parameters. Now, in all cases, we really need to understand you have to have the water parameters that are necessary for breeding. And that's why you're gonna to wanna to do your research on my suggestions. Again, I've got some species profiles down in the description below if you want more information. My advice to you as you go through this series, make note of your water parameters and start researching fish that I suggest that will best fit the water parameters you already have. Now this last option, my recommendation is to be careful. A lot of people try to breed shell dwelling cichlids like Maltese or Simlers or Gold Ocelotus in a 10 gallon. And while they will breed, this is not necessarily a great setup for shell dwellers. One, because they start to get a little bit territorial and that can introduce some problems depending on the type of shell dweller. And so while it is possible to breed Maltese and Brevis and Gold Ocelotus and Neolamprologus Simulus, in a 10 gallon. I think we're gonna hold off on that recommendation until we get to a larger tank. All right, everyone, so I hope you found these suggestions useful. Again, if you are looking for more information on how to breed shrimp, check out this video in the upper right-hand corner. If you want some more information on how to breed guppies, this video in the lower right-hand corner will help you do that. Would love to hear from you in the comments section below. What fish have you bred in a 10 gallon? Thanks for being here and we'll see you in the next one.